There is so much going down here in Cali where I am based, including the state's reparation task force that voted Saturday to approve recommendations on how the state should compensate black residents and apologize for generations of harm caused by discriminatory policies. This is pretty big and it could mean a lot in terms of maybe bringing up that whole black income and closing that whole racial wealth gap. Well, as part of the reparations, the task force approved what would be a landmark public apology that would acknowledge California's responsibility for past wrongs. Check this out from the AP. An apology crafted by lawmakers must include a censure of the gravest barbarities carried out on behalf of the state. According to the draft recommendation approved by the task force, those would include a condemnation of former governor Peter Hardiman Burnett, the state's first elected governor and a white supremacist who encouraged laws to exclude black people from California. And although that California had joined the union and purported to be a free state in 1850, well, California Supreme Court also upheld the Federal Fugitive Slave Act, essentially allowing for the capture and return of runaway enslaved people. And this happened for over a decade until at least emancipation to a certain extent. And the harms they continued over the years, the New York Times had noted them. A preliminary report made public last year outlined how enslaved black people were forced to California during the gold rush era and how in the 50s and 60s racially restrictive covenants and redlining segregated black Californians in many of the state's largest cities. By participating in these horrors, California further perpetuated the harms African Americans faced imbuing racial prejudice throughout society through segregation, public and private discrimination and unequal dispersal of state and federal funding, the document says. Now it's important to note that an apology like this would be pretty landmark because California has apologized before. It apologized for placing Japanese Americans in internment camps in World War II, for the violence that it perpetuated against indigenous people, but yet, there has not been any apology to black Californians. And also in addition to discussing the acknowledgement, well, the nine member panel also approved monetary reparations, which are significant. So here's some details on the economist backed estimations. One such estimate laid out in the report determined that an address that determined to address the harms from redlining by banks, which disqualified people in black neighborhoods from taking out mortgages and owning homes. Eligible black Californians should receive up to $148,000. That estimate is based on a figure of 3,366 for each year lived in California from the early 1930s to the late 1970s, when federal redlining was most prevalent. And to address the impact of over policing and mass incarceration, the report estimates each eligible person would receive $115,000 or about $2,300 for each year of residency in California from 1971 to 2020 during the decades long war. Now all of these are estimates and they're incredibly important because we do know that in California, a recent report found that for every dollar a white family earns, well black families only earn about 60 cents and there's a reason for that. A lot of it has to do with discrimination and being held back intentionally by state sanctioned laws and policies and I think it's a good idea for the government to come forward and do something about it to acknowledge its harms. Jackson, what are your thoughts? I think that you know victories in instances like this show the power of persistence and conviction in whatever it is that you're fighting for. And the reason I say that is because reparations it really is not popular among the American people. It just isn't. It's not something that people necessarily on a grand scale believe is possible. So again, that's why I said when you have victories like this, this is what provides hope to continue to fight for something, even though it may seem like it's out of reach, even though it may seem like maybe it's even something symbolic or maybe something to look righteous. But actual <laughs> victories in these circumstances remind you that a, a, a debt is owed that was yeah. not paid. On top of the fact that again, that's what politics is all about. And you know, you never know what you can get through. Um, but a debt has not been paid that is owed. And at the end of the day, a discussion needs to be had on what exactly needs to be done about it. So I think that this is great. And again, uh, we all need hope, we all need encouragement. And this is both of those things. Absolutely, hope and encouragement are extremely important.